Buying gifts for homebrewers can sometimes be difficult, not knowing what to buy, what they need, what they might want. And if you're a new home brewer, knowing what to get next might be a little bit of a daunting task because you don't know what everything is and what you might need. In this video, I'm going to show you 10 things under $50 that you might want to buy either for a home brewer or you might add to your own brewery. Roll that intro. How's it going? My name is Brian. Welcome to another video. If this is your first time here and you'd like to learn more about electric brewing, see how-to videos and product recommendation videos just like this one, consider subscribing. And if you do, don't forget to click that bell so you won't miss a video when it comes out. We're not going to waste a bunch of time talking about everything. We're just going to jump right into it. Let's take a look at our first recommendation. I've said it once. I'm going to say it again. Brewers make wort, yeast makes beer. And part of the yeast making the beer has to do with cell count, viability, uh, you know, the healthiness of the yeast. One of the ways to confirm viability and increase the health of the yeast is actually do a starter. And so what I've got here is what I've got listed below is a, a starter kit, which comes with the yeast nutrient, a package of DME, and that kit I think is like $24. If you want to step it up to the next level and, you know, make your yeast starter even more effective, without having to constantly come by and stir this thing up to keep the yeast roused and, and eating the sugars. The deluxe kit that I have also linked down below adds a stir plate, a stir bar, and a couple other small items along with what comes in the base kit. So, uh, you know, one thing that's nice about these is you can make the starter mixture or make the, the starter wort in the, the uh, flask, chill it down, and then pitch your yeast right in the flask, cover the one small opening, let it go to work, and when you're ready to pitch it in the beer, or in the wart, it'll be ready to go. So highly recommended. They come in one liter, two liter, five liter of the baby carboy. <laughs> so uh, I highly recommend doing a yeast starter, especially if you're a new brewer or if you want to get something for somebody that is on your list, check that out. All right, on to the next one. Second up on the list, you guessed it, is a pair of brewing gloves. Now these things are really, really nice. They're not that expensive at all. But I tell you what, if you want to take your experience and your, you know, your comfort to the next level, these things are really where it's at. And, and I don't want to do a PSA here, but just to tell you, the chemicals that we use in brewing are not meant to be exposed to the skin. If you read any of the labels, they're really not. PBW really strips the lipids from your skin. So does, so can star sand. So do yourself a favor, not only for comfort, but for safety, get yourself a good pair of brewing gloves. These things are not that expensive and they really help you clean out mash tons, you know, grabbing hot grain, squeezing a brew in a bag bag. I mean, they just, they work for so many different situations and I think they're a great gift idea or an addition to your brewery. Let's get to number three. Up next on the list is a pH meter. And I know you can buy these things for 10 or $11 on Amazon. But let me tell you, you should get a quality pH meter. Now I like the Apera instruments and it is a moderately priced. And the nice thing about it is it comes in the package with a lanyard, it comes with calibration fluid, and then it also comes with a laminated calibration instruction set. So this thing, I mean, it's really nice. It's under $50 and I, I've been using it for quite a while. I've seen a lot of other brewers use it. It comes in a nice handy case that you can keep in your brewery and store it away. And if you want to level up that gift or level up your own brewery, get yourself some of the pH calibration liquid or buffering liquid in bulk format. That way when you run out of the stuff that comes in the kit, you can add this to it. So a couple of the things that I use to adjust my pH in my beers is going to be lactic acid and phosphoric acid. Now I personally use lactic acid quite a bit because of the fact that it's an 88% concentration and it moves the needle pretty quickly. Those are two ways that you can lower the pH in your beer. Now what if you brew dark beers or you need to, you find out your pH is below 5.2 to 5.5 or 6 range. Now you can use sodium bicarbonate. Now what is that? That is simply baking soda. So grab yourself a big box of that along with your pH meter and your lactic acid and everything and you should be good to go. Any of your homebrew calculators that you might use will reference you know lactic or phosphoric acid and then also sodium bicarbonate will be one of those things that you can raise the pH with. On to number four. Now number four is really not that costly but I've used it for so many different things and that is the carbonation cap. Now you can get them in the stainless steel just like this one or you can get uh, Kegland makes them in plastic, which they work absolutely fine as well. 
you can kind of see where I'm going here. I've got two pieces of hose in there. I can connect lines on my kegerator. I can connect one line to the to a keg uh, picnic tap line, connect the other line to my CO2 tank, blow any kind of liquid out of there just for storage. You can stick this into the top of whatever your fermentation vessel is and use this to do a pressure transfer. So I really, really like these things and I highly recommend that you get one, possibly even two. I've got them linked in the description down below, but these are, these are really, really cost-effective device that you can use in so many different ways. On to number five. Probably one of the most common ways for new home brewers to dispense their beer is to bottle it. Now, most every kit comes with one of these wing bottlers and they're okay. Now, a great upgrade from this for any home brewer that's still bottling is certainly a bench capper. Now, these are great because you can raise them up and down and then get it set to the right height, put your cap in there, and then you just push down and it forms the, the cap over top of the bottle there. Now, if you want to step up just a little bit in price above the $50 range, Anvil actually makes a really nice, heavy duty, sturdy capper, and it has a really nice mechanism for raising it up and down. Um, it has a nice plunger that goes up and down. But the thing that, to me, that is the best part of this thing, Anvil actually has a mechanism on theirs where you simply take out a screw and it folds down and you can actually hang it on the wall so you're not really losing a lot of space you can put it up out of the way so that's a really nice feature of their bench capper all right on to i think number seven <laughs> i can't remember now <laughs> all right let's get to it all right up next on the list is temperature control now you know whether it's the cold of winter or the hot of the heat of summer you definitely want to try to control the temperature range of your beer, your wort while it's fermenting. And so Inkbird has several different models uh, for the OCD types. There is the Wi-Fi version, and I will put a link to a card up here on a review that I've actually done on this unit. But this one here, you can actually control it remotely basically anywhere in the world that you have an internet connection if it's connected to your Wi-Fi. This is the most basic version and I have it listed in the description down below. This one just basically runs heating or cooling, will maintain a temperature. It does have a removable probe, which is nice. The Wi-Fi version does not. Now, if you want to level up that to a little bit more features or you know add to your, to your gift there, you can buy one of these heat belts. And you probably saw this in the uh, thumbnail. <laughs> I've used this a long time when I was doing uh, bucket fermentation. This thing works absolutely wonderful. It'll raise the ambient, or from ambient temperature, it'll probably raise the fermenter probably about five or six degrees. Uh, next level up from that, that I've actually found after doing a ton of research and, and buying things online. This is actually a heating pad that I got off Amazon and it's linked in the description down below. And the nice thing about this is one thing you have to look at whenever you buy one of these is that a lot of them have an auto shut off. They'll run for two or three hours and then shut off. I actually found one that you can turn it on, it'll stay on, it doesn't shut off. And so this thing can be put into the jacket of a fermenter. You can use it to bungee cord around a, a carboy or a plastic bucket. I will tell you that this particular one gets hot enough that I actually was able to do a Kvike fermentation at about 90 degrees and it had no problem holding it at all. It was cycling on and off with the Inkbird temperature controller. All right, on to number eight. Next up on the list is a good refractometer. Now most, you know, kits come with a refractometer and they're just a basic one and they do the job. But if you want to step up your game and get a really nice refractometer, Brewing America makes some absolutely wonderful refractometers. And there's a couple of them that I like out of their lineup that they have. And the first one is a thermometer hydrometer. So basically this thing comes with a thermometer in the bottom and a hydrometer on the top. Now why that's important, especially for a lot of you new brewers, is that most of these things are calibrated to 60 degrees Fahrenheit. A few degrees or even 10 degrees above that or below that will throw off the reading of the hydrometer. This takes all of the guesswork out of that because it has, a, it has a thermometer, a temperature reading on one side, and then it has the adjustments that you have to make for the temperature change on the other side. So if you look at it and you say, okay, my wort is at uh, 1040 and it's 70 degrees, so I need to add 0 0.001 to my reading. So this will tell you what the conversion is. I mean, there's websites out there and stuff that'll do that, but for just the handiness of being able to 
take a look at these things take a look at your hydrometer and it's got the thermometer on there i mean it's just it it they're top notch in my opinion now the next offering from them that they have that's really nice they recently came out with is a mash hydrometer now you might ask yourself what that is that is actually a hydrometer that is calibrated to 155 degrees now why is that important well if you're mashing at say 152 153 you know somewhere around in there you can pull a sample of your wart off and drop this in your flask and it's going to tell you pretty close to where you are no need to chill it down no need to do anything you know put it in an ice water bath or anything like that to take a reading on it you can just use this to tell where you are in the process and see what your current gravity is. All right, on to number eight. I think it's eight. All right, up next on the list, I would say probably every kit that people buy starting out doing home brewing comes with one of these spoons in it. But if you move up into all grain, these things are just not going to cut it. I can't tell you how many of these I have broken in a mash trying to stir it up. So. One of the things that you can level up either, you know, you can you can get for the home brewer on your list if they're going into all grain or level up your own brewery with is a mash pedal. And here is a stainless steel version from Anvil. And I really do like this one. Um, it's just, it's a nice, compact, sturdy mash pedal. It has uh, little anvils that are kind of cute down, the bottom down here. And th those things do provide a good avenue for grain to flow through. So when you're stirring up the mash, if you got dough balls in there, and uh, this is a really this is a good option here that's one option and then there's also the wood option which uh, those are really nice i think this one's made out of maple and uh, it certainly is an option and it's one of those things where you know a lot there's a lot of different styles and types out there i've got one listed in the description down below but i mean if you're going into all grain and you want to be able to stir that mash all right on to the next one all right moving on is another gravity taking or you know another uh wart measuring device and that is a refractometer i've had this thing for a long time i've used it a ton um, they're just they're really great for capturing a drop of wart from your process and put it on here hold it up to the light and then you simply read the scale on the inside a lot of times they'll come with a pipette or a pipette i don't know what they call it it's a pipette i believe it is one other thing to note about the refractometer they're great and everything but one of the probably one of the most common questions I get a lot of times is, hey, my beer looks like it's done, it's not done, and the gravity was this when it started, and the gravity is this right now. And the first question I always ask them is, what are you using for your final gravity measurement? And a lot of times I'll find that they're using a refractometer for their final gravity measurement. These things are great for unfermented wort, but as soon as you have an alcohol presence in the wort, these definitely lose their effectiveness and they are not as accurate. On to the next one. All right, up next is a subject that every, if you ask any brewer what their favorite part of the process is, and cleaning said no one ever. <laughs> There's a lot of it that goes on with brewing, and you have to do a lot of cleaning. But one of the things that I don't see, I see people making keysers and getting keg graders and all that stuff, and I don't see a lot of times, I don't see them going, hey, look at the solution that I got for cleaning the keg lines. It's something that's very, very important to do. Something that you really should do on a regular basis is, you know, I, I do it every time I change a keg out or a keg runs out or if I've had the line sitting for too long. Now, this is something that I made myself. Um, I don't have a link for this in the description. What I do have a link for is a, a cleaning kit. Comes with a solution with a hand pump with a fastener that goes into the uh, keg, uh, the faucet tap. Definitely pick up some sort of a, clay, a keg cleaning device, whether you make it yourself or you buy one pre-made, that is definitely something that will improve the quality of your keg beer if you're kegging. All right, one bonus item that I wanted to add at the end here, if you have a local homebrew shop that you know the person that you're, you know, buying a gift for frequents, go buy a gift card there. And, you know, that's a great way to, you know, give a gift to a brewer as well as support local businesses that are there when you need them and can help you out in a pinch. I do want to give a shout out to all the folks in our Patreon club. We certainly appreciate it. It, you know, it, it makes it so much easier for us to do these videos. And the, the, the appreciation is definitely through the roof on that. We certainly do appreciate it. If I missed anything on this list and you think it should be added, leave a comment down below. Let me know what you think I missed or something that you think might be a good addition to this list so that everybody reading the comments down below can see it. This has been Brian for Short Circuit of Brewers. We'll see you in the next video.